13 mitigator Ford Fusion. I'd like to thank you for listening to Let's Talk Racing.tv. Speedway, thanks for listening to Let's Talk Racing. I'm Teddy Peter, driver of number 17 Toyota in our NASCAR Camp World Truck Series, and you're listening to Let's Talk Racing. <laughs>
that qualified back then was needed to have fast cars too. So I kind of had to step my game back up and, and you know, use my tires up a little bit more than I wanted to. But I think if we could have saved our tires 15, 20 laps more than what we did, we probably would have had a shot at it. Just because, I mean, from the drop of the green flag until we got to fifth place, we were we were just as fast as the leader, if not faster. And, uh, you know, just having to start back there and come up to the front and the guys that finished in front of me, they, they were able to start up front, so they were able to save their tires a little bit, a bit more than me. But, I mean, it was a really good race. I was really proud of the guys. You know, we worked really hard. We really only have one guy that works in the shop. You know, these other big teams, they have four, five, six guys that are working in the shop every day. And I go over to the shop and try to help out as much as I can. And then, uh, like, Corey, he'll, he'll come over and uh, he'll, he'll set up the car. But we really only got one guy working on it. His name's Steve-O, and he does an excellent job preparing the car and everything. But, uh, you know, being a low-budget team like we are and to go out there and run, run with the Turner Scott Motorsports and all those guys, is, I think it's awesome. Oh yeah, definitely. Um, a lot of good competition in K&N East uh, this year, as in years past. I mean, a lot of good talent is coming out of K&N with uh, Kyle Larson, uh, you know, of course, Corey LaJoy. We were just talking about that earlier. Uh, you, you've got Corey on your team this year, and uh, he's a, a big help. Yeah, he's a really big help. He's kind of like my driver coach, and uh, every time we go to a new track or the same track as last year, me and him will sit down and we'll talk about it. We'll, we'll go around the track and uh, he'll, he'll show me a few pointers that will help me in the race. And actually, right before the Richmond race that morning, he uh, he was showing me something going down into turn one that really helped me in the long run in the race. And, uh, you know, he's helped me out a lot. Uh, from the first race last year to now, I've, uh, I've really improved um, on my on my communicating back and forth to the team and and being able to diagnose the race a lot better, but uh, yeah, he's helped me out a lot. Yeah, a lot of a lot of good uh, good talent coming from and, uh, the Lejoy. I'll say Corey, you know, worked on his own cars uh, coming was, up. Yeah, when he when he ran at K and N, so he has a lot of knowledge. I mean, running against the bigger team, so it sounds like some of that's kind of just translated over, which is a good person to have on your team. You know, and Corey's got uh, a lot of experience with ARCA, K and N, a little bit, and grew up in a racing family. Right, I mean, his dad uh, was a two time champion really good that you got him on the team. When I saw him earlier in the day, I was wondering, you know, who he was with, and I saw y'all guys together later that in the afternoon. So, uh, now where, uh, let's talk about a little bit about you, how you got involved in racing, uh, where you're originally from, um, and where your shop's out of now. Uh, I believe you said it was out of Carolina? Yeah, we're actually out of uh, the Joy of Feeding's uh, shop. We have a bay kind of rented out for both of our cars, and uh, but I'm from Winston. Georgia is where I grew up at, and I actually still live down in Winston, Georgia, and I come up here to North Carolina and I stay with my fiance's parents uh, through the week, and I kind of go over to the race shop, but basically the way I got into racing was my dad, he's always been a fan of uh, racing, and uh, he's always been a fan of Jeff Gordon. Well, when I was three years old, mm -hmm. he got me into racing, I would always want to watch the races on Sunday. Mm -hmm. and the week, that's all we would do on Sunday is, is we watch the races. And uh, when I turned six years old, we got into the quarter midget race. And he bought me a quarter midget, and, I mean, it went on from there. I went from quarter midget to staying the winter uh, to less cars, and then some late models, and even a couple of dirt late model races, and now I'm in the Canaan series. But it's, it's been really good. I mean, I've, I've loved racing. It's, ever since I was three, and three years old, it's all I ever wanted to do, and I, and I really want to try to make it up to the Sprint Cup level. Well, you, you just said something really interesting. Uh, a lot of guys, they don't never try dirt, and uh, I came from dirt to asphalt, and that, that's a big switch, isn't it? Oh, yeah, it was a lot of fun, but uh, money started getting a little tight. My dad, he said, we have to pick between dirt or asphalt this year, and I've always done asphalt, so I just I just stuck with asphalt. But, uh, yeah, running, running, you know, we ran six or seven dirt races. It was a lot of fun. It was, it was really cool. Well, uh, talking about, you know, we've already talked about Richmond, and we really haven't talked about your season so far. How uh, How's it coming along, and uh, are y'all hitting the goals that y'all have uh, set forth? 
Yeah, well, we want we want to win, try to win the championship like any other team does uh, this year, and uh, we we thought we would have a couple of wins under our belt right now, but we don't. And uh, we we kind of started off the season a little bit slow. You know, at Duke of Iron, we had a really good car. We were running fifth and had a right retire go down, so that was kind of some bad luck for us there. Then we turned it over and going to Daytona and finished second, so that was really good. And Bristol, we were we uh, we ran fifth, so I mean we were we were doing really good. And then we we go to Greenville and uh, we kind of over adjusted the car a little bit at the halfway break. We fell back in 10th and ended up getting an incident with another car. And then uh, coming to Richmond, we finished in the top five again. So we had three top fives, and then the other two races, they were 20th or something like that. So we really want to try to get a few more wins under our belt. You know, I, I really want to try to get four or five wins this year and, and be able to fight for the championship. But... Ben Rhodes, he's been really consistent all year. We're really going to have to have him have a bad day or, or two bad days to really have a shot at it. Now, you said you raced uh, five races last year. You're still considered a rookie this year, aren't you? Yeah, I'm still considered a rookie this year. We ran uh, five races last year and ended up actually winning at Dover International Speedway last year, and that was my last race of the year, so that was really cool. That, that track's really fast, so... It was, it was awesome winning there. So out of all the tracks so far this year in 2014, what's been your favorite track? Uh, I'd have to say going back to Bristol. Uh, I ran that. last year and it, and it didn't go over so well. Uh -huh. Very first race uh, with LeJoy and them and uh, I finished, you know, 15th or so. And uh, going back there and being able to run up front, front was really fun. Well, uh, it, it's totally a different experience being able to race Bristol, isn't it? I mean, it's, it's probably something hard to explain for guys like us that have never, you know, done anything like that. But I, I've been associated with the Southern Mods and the King and N series, and it's just, and talking with everybody, they're just like, Bristol is an experience. Yeah, yeah it's, it's really intimidating, actually, and uh, it's got a lot of things. And when you're in, when you get down into the corner, you can't really see around the corner to see what's coming up next right that's why a lot of guys get in wreck you know down in you go down in the corner you can't really see what's in front of you so that's why they have a long pile you just see the track <laughs> track <laughs> coming at you <laughs> yeah uh yeah, definitely Bristol is something. I've always told uh, anybody that's a race fan that hadn't been to Bristol, I'm like, you definitely got to go to Bristol yeah, one time. Bristol is one heck of an experience. And I guess another track that I think is so great, you know, because we don't live too far from it, is Richmond. Yeah. And uh, three-quarter mile track, you know, one of the only three-quarter miles on the whole circuit, I believe. Yeah. The only three-quarter. So, uh, but definitely one thing I'm glad to see K&N do is they, uh, they're definitely getting guys – at these tracks, I mean, you know, the guy you definitely want to probably move up the trucks uh, nationwide and cup, and you're you're getting the experience by going to Richmond, Dover, Bristol, and places like that, along with some short tracks um, like Greenville. So yeah, really good to be able to see that, and uh, I know that's really good experience for you. Yeah, it really is. You know, being able to run at those tracks and maybe running. At those tracks of the nationwide sprint cup up was a huge deal because you already you've already been there so you would think when you go back there in the nationwide or sprint cup car that you would be even better at those tracks than you would at tracks you haven't been to yeah, but you know, it, it seems like everybody that's jumped out of the Canaan in car even though they're they're kind of similar they're like it's a whole new beast you know yeah, so those guys are still running on basketball tires right mm -hmm. yeah so yeah but it was a great uh. I thought it was a great event, man. It, uh, it got everything in on that one day on Saturday. I know it was an extra day for y'all guys to have to stay, but I think NASCAR did a great job uh, with logistics, getting everything together and ready to roll with it. That was a really good job. They did, a, they did an awesome job getting it done. I was, I was actually glad that we kind of ran during the day because I had no idea what my car was going to do at night because during practice and all that, we... We never got to practice at night, so I had no idea what it was going to do at night. So being able to run in the morning was, was the big advantage for us, I think. Well, I tell you what, we really appreciate you uh, calling in on Let's Talk Racing and uh, definitely want to talk to you some more throughout the season. Hopefully you'll get that uh, win this year and quite a few more with there, and uh, we'll uh, end up talking to you again. You want to thank your sponsors and everybody uh, before going? 
calling in again and uh, we look forward to speaking to you some more before the uh, 2014 season's over. Alright, All right. thank you. Alright, good luck. Thanks, man. Ben Rhodes. Ben Rhodes. Welcome to Let's Talk Race. Hey, how are you? Good, how are you, man? Hey. I'm here with uh, Brian Morehouse. Scott got, I didn't forget your name this time. He got it right. <laughs> man. Scott well, welcome to Let's Talk Racing, Ben. Yeah. So how is your uh, season going so far? It's going good. Thank you guys for having me on. It's, uh, it's, going, it's going good so far. Um, leading the points, so that's, that's always good. Um, I think it puts the pressure on the other guys to, to perform not so so much. Uh, this week just been doing our thing. We're kind of on cruise control right now. Just keep doing what we're doing, and I think we can rack up the points. I hear you. Well, Ben, uh, you've been around the sport quite a while, man. Do you want to give us a little bit of an idea how you got started? Um, and you're coming into the season. I think you're with uh, Turner Motorsports. Yes, sir. Turner Scott Motorsports. Yeah, and uh, give us a little bit of insight how you got uh, involved in racing and uh, what led you up to the King and East Series. Well, uh, I was born and raised here in Louisville, Kentucky. Uh, I'm not going to school here. I'm a junior in high school, and I started racing when I was about six or seven in go karts, just in a local division. A um, couple, couple tracks. Here locally for two years or so. Mm -hmm. We're traveling around in go karts, uh, won some championships and some races. Moved up in the Bandoleros, went into the Legend cars, late models, and uh, finally the K&N cars here. I actually made my first Camping World Trickery start uh, a month ago at Martinsville. Oh, how was that? That was great. That was great. I learned a lot. Great experience, isn't it? I think I've ever been in. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, so far this year, I mean, I think uh, Keenan East is into their, is it fifth or sixth race? Fifth? Uh, fifth race. Okay. Give us a little insight. I know uh, y'all guys uh, started at New Smyrna in February, and of course a couple of days later you uh, took it on over there to the uh, Daytona, um, the smaller track that they developed over there on the backstretch. Uh, give us a little insight about how everything got started for you at the beginning of the year. Well, uh, everything started out really well. We both out on the outside pole in the first race. Um, we ended up finishing fourth. We didn't really know which way the track was going to go there. Me and my crew chief both never had experience there. We asked for, we asked for some people with experience to go, well, it might be this, but it might be that, it might be this. We made a guess and went at it. But then Daytona, we actually qualified on the pole, but um, that car spun out in front of us by we were running in second and uh, kind of cracked us in a mess. We went to Bristol and led the majority of the race after qualifying on pole. And then we had a late race restart that knocked us out of the lead and finished third. We went to Greenville and actually sat on the pole and won the race. And um, so I had a string of three poles there and now we went to Richmond and qualified fifth. So that was kind of a bummer. I hear you. <laughs> uh, so where, how did y'all qualify? Were y'all up front or towards the rear during qualifying for Richmond? Richmond we were second to last car I believe or, or third from last. Okay. Yeah, I, I tell you what, it was a long night uh, there Friday night trying to figure out whether uh, Keenan and East was going to get that race in, but it seems like uh, everything got together, wasn't able to get it in after the Nationwide, and came back Saturday and got that race in at 9 o'clock in the morning. What did you think about that? I think it didn't even feel like a race. <laughs> didn't even feel like a race? <laughs> it was weird. Yeah, it felt more like practice. Like, all the crew members um, think the same thing I do, you know, they feel the same way. It just it was really odd to run the race in the morning like that. It yeah. Took out all the excitement that led up to it. After you got a good night's sleep, you just kind of went to the track, buckled in, and went at it. Well, I tell you what, it was a good race. Uh, a lot of competition. Um, it looked like 37 cars started the event, and uh, I know there was a lot of uh, incidents and everything. It's going to be definitely a good. Uh, uh, race to see on TV when it comes on um, this Thursday, I believe. Yeah, May 2nd, I think is when it's Oh, it's going to be May 2nd. So, uh, I, I think... think. So. Don't, don't swear to it. <laughs> but uh, it looked like a real good race. Now, you, you said you started fifth, and uh, tell us how your race day went from there. Well, it was actually really smooth. Like, like you said, there was a lot of cautions, and I know there was a lot of wrecking going on behind me, and luckily we were never around that, except around lap 30. 
30, there was a, a, green, or a, a caution flag. And on the restart, I think somebody took it three wide, and I got stuck on the outside, and the guy inside um, got pushed up into the side of me. And that kind of came my left front fender in. But we were all good, though. After that, we, we just kind of cruised around, saving our stuff, and we picked them off one by one, got up in the second place, and we made a charge at Cole Cluster. But um, he had a little bit better car than us there at the end of the race, being able to pull me off the corners. And I just, I couldn't get to him in time. We were uh, about a car length away from him coming to the checker, though, so we closed up the ground. I got you. Now, uh, your crew chief has got a lot of history uh, with racing. Um, you want to go over your team and uh, give us a little bit of insight on everybody? Yeah, Mark McFarland is an awesome crew chief. Uh, he, he has so much experience in the car and outside the car, and he knows a lot of people. So he, he provides us with a, a big advantage, I think. And um, he actually ran nationwide, some nationwide races and truck races. So he has a lot of experience in the car. I have Kevin, who is my car chief, Joe, who's an awesome fabricator. Uh, he actually, I don't know if you guys saw it, but I raced the bed this past weekend for the Kentucky Derby. And he That's what I was going to ask him about. <laughs> Yeah, we'll definitely have to get into that. Um, talking about uh, Turner Scott Motorsports, um, awesome facility down there in Mooresville Sports Park. Uh, just uh, y'all, y'all house what four teams out of there? I think probably more than that. You house more. Only myself. Four all together or five? Five altogether. I got you. Yeah, I, I had the chance uh, back in February before I was uh, leaving Charlotte to come back up here to Virginia that uh, to go down there and see Mark, and I was amazed by walking in. And, you know, came in east, there was just cars being built everywhere and just, you know, just great equipment. And it seemed like a great bunch of guys to uh, be able to be associated with. Yeah, I mean, that's got to be like the Rick Hendrick of, of the lower level well, teams. You right. Know? Well, uh, talking about 2014, uh, it sounds like it's been a great year for you. And it looks like, uh, you know, the future is looking bright. What are you uh, planning on doing? You know, I know your number one goal is to win races uh, and to probably move up further. You want to give us some insight on that? Yeah, so our number one goal this year is to win the championship. And the number two goal this year is to win Rookie of the Year. So we're, we're going for both top, top honors of the season. and. We're going to, I think that's pretty realistic so far. We're, we're leading the points, you know, we, we've had really good success, but I think those are realistic goals, and um, we're, we're done for some more wins. I know the guys are wanting some more pole hats after winning after winning three poles. I kind of need them on my hat, so we got to get a couple more to complete the team. I hear you. But yeah, well, I got some incentive there. That's always good. Um, Getting back, you, you had mentioned uh, having your first truck start at Martinsville. Uh, when do you probably see yourself getting back in the truck series and uh, gaining a little bit more experience? Our next truck race is going to be May 30th at Dover. And then the very next day I'm racing um, at Bowman Gray Stadium at the Canon East Car. So kind of a big difference. Mm -hmm. Have you been to Bowman? No, I've only been there to watch. So. But let me tell you about this place. <laughs> I, I went there five, six years ago when I first got uh, on with the Southern Modifieds, and uh, we didn't race that night. And it's the only place I've ever seen short track racing with 17,000 people there. And it is a bull ring. And not what everybody understands is it's a football stadium. So they have to start at, I don't know, probably April, and they have to end by the end of August. So it's you're you're really going to love this place, man. If you love short track racing, I think you're really going to love it. I got there. All the guys were telling me we got to be there at 5 p.m. Race didn't start till seven. I'm like, it's short track racing. We get there. There was nobody there by seven o'clock. The house was packed. That's I couldn't great. believe it. I mean, that's great for short track racing. Yeah. I'm gonna so, have to go down there and check it out because I, I haven't been there. It's really good, and Canon really puts on a great show. <laughs> They've been there for the last two years. Ben, I think you're really going to like it. What other tracks are you looking forward to uh, in the upcoming 2014 for the Canon East? Well, I'm really looking forward to some of the road course races. That's that's going to be an experience for me. So, have you done any road course racing? No, this will be the first time that uh, Watkins Glen. And VIR, so I'm really looking forward to those races. But I just gotta, gotta get some practice and fill it out and learn what my, my strengths and weaknesses are, and I think we'll be okay. Now, are you gonna do any testing for that? I mean, so far as like maybe do like a CCA race at 
VIR or something? No, I'm not doing any other races. Not that we have planned. Um, just going to have like a, a day in the K&A car that we go up there and test the VIR. And, um, try to learn as much as I can then. I think if we get a couple tests then, uh, that'll really help me beforehand. Mm -hmm. I tell you what, VIR is a, a beautiful facility. I know uh, Keen and East raced there last year. It was a really good race. Um, great experience. I think you're really going to love that track. I've never been to Watkins Glen. Only read about it, but uh, I think you're really going to enjoy that. So what's the deal with this uh, bed race? We see a picture of you here sitting on the bed with a steering wheel in the middle. Did y'all build that thing, or what, what's the what's the story behind it? Well, Turner Scott Motorsports built it. Uh, Joe, that's on our team, he actually built the bed along with Ben Smith, who is uh, one of the truck haulers, uh, or one of the truckers, and uh, very, very good fabricators. They built an awesome bed, and it's, it's, it's something else. We got some road race bike tires on it, and mm -hmm. some hubs from, I think it was a PRC go kart, and uh, <laughs> something, I, I don't even know. You'd have to ask the guys that built it, that how they set this thing up, but. It's, it's pretty awesome. Got a ton of camber in the wheel. Uh, yeah, we see. It looks <laughs> all four of them. <laughs> now, let me ask you, I mean, what made y'all, how'd y'all hear about this race and what made y'all want to uh, get involved with it? Well, it's, it's kind of a big event up here in Louisville. Really? Um, it's just one of the big festivities they got leading up to the Kentucky Derby. So uh -huh. we, just, uh, we just decided to do it this year. We're going to do a bunch of the, the, the stuff they got going on. We're doing parade tomorrow. Now, where'd y'all end up uh, finishing? It was a bed race. They won. They, they all won? Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay, great. We, Man, you uh, can't beat that. He, uh, we actually knocked off the five-time champs. That, that oh. Year. We, we knocked them off the throne. Great, great job. So how, how far is the track? And what is it? Is it just like kind of like a, I guess, a circle track and you just keep going around in circles? It's a figure eight track. It's about oh, okay. or so, um, and they they line the beds up side by side, and you know you're inside lane one turn, outside lane the next, and uh, so it's equal distance on both sides, and you just race for time. And uh, okay, so you're you stay in your lane then? Yeah, you stay in your lane and, and you race for fast overall time. You're kind of racing yourself, you know. You're racing the track. I got you. It's pretty cool. Well, tell us, you. It seemed like you liked it, and it was pretty good experience. Oh yeah, it was. It was great. The guys were all pumped up. They were pushing the bed. We had international pole vaulters, college football player, or he used to play college football um, up here in Louisville, and he was an, uh, a veteran. And we also had a guy who was like a COO for a, a big health clinic up here, who was a really fit guy as well. That's pretty cool. I've never seen anything like that before. <laughs> yeah, I don't either. I've seen it I, last week, and I was like... I heard okay. you say something, and I looked over at this picture, and I was like, well, man, what kind of go-kart is that? <laughs> but man, bed racing. Did you lay down on it? Is it comfortable? Well, I didn't lay down on it. I kind of, like, I kind of kneeled the whole time we raced, but um, I, I didn't try it out before the race or afterwards. Did you have to wear your helmet? I see your helmet sitting on there. Yeah, they made me wear a helmet and mouthpiece. <laughs> Mouthpiece. <laughs> well, it was. It was they, they really needed though. Some of these teams, it was. It was funny. And all the Home Depot said they took a dolly or, or some people call them hand trucks, and they took some ratchet straps and strapped the bed on top of a dolly and laid it down on, on its side, and they just pushed it. Wow. <laughs> that's crazy. Well, definitely. Uh, that's definitely something I've never seen before. I've yeah, never heard of. But uh, yeah, really. Definitely. That Perfect. maybe that's something will catch on. So yeah. Now, uh, where where do y'all head to next uh, with the K N East um, series? We are heading to uh, this one right in Iowa, Iowa, May seventeenth. Okay. May seventeenth out in Iowa. I tell you, that's a beautiful track out there. Uh, have you ever visited that track before? Been there twice. Um, raced my part time schedule last year. We we went to that track twice. All righty. Well, I tell you what, uh, good luck there, man. I tell you, we appreciate you calling in, and we look forward to speaking to you more. And you want to go ahead and uh, mention your sponsors and uh, team? Yeah, thank you guys so much for having me on. But uh, we, we, we wouldn't be able to do any of this without Alpha Energy Solutions. They are our sponsor on our bed, as well as the car. We also have Alliance Comfort Systems, Kentucky National Guard, and Park Community Federal Credit Union. 
Great, great. Well, hey, man, I appreciate it. We hope we talk to you some more throughout 2014 and you pick up some more wins. And uh, looks like you're having a heck of a season. Good luck with your rookie year and heading to that championship. Thank you guys so much. All right, take care. Good luck. Talk to you later. You don't have to do that. All you got to do is yeah, push the other I'm line and it automatically. Yeah, but I can't remember which one it is. So instead of hanging up on one and Well, well the, the one that one. you're talking about is going to be solid. Mm, I think they were both flashing. It seemed like no. Well, go ahead and just... Let's talk racing. Nick? Hello? Hey, man. Hey, how you doing, man? <laughs> Had me scared there for a little while. We thought we pushed the wrong button. So, how you doing? Uh, now, uh, Nick Drake is the driver of the number 15 Napa car? Yeah. Hey, all right. I got that right. <laughs> hey, uh... Welcome to the show. Um, let's talk racing. We want to uh, be able to get with you and talk about this weekend's race out there at uh, Richmond Air National Raceway. And uh, we have, as we've talked with everybody, we know it was a rain delay. Um, it's a long day Friday for y'all guys after qualifying. Oh yeah, it was, it was a long, long wait to get this to get that race done on Friday, and we didn't get much sleep Saturday. Waking up that early, long long race in the morning, so that's kind of different. Yeah, that's what everybody's been saying. I mean, NASCAR did everything they could to be able to get the race in. The next morning, uh, a lot of people that may not have been there uh, started at 9 a.m. Uh, and everybody was up bright and early at 6 and at the track and ready to roll. And it was a little bit different, wasn't it? Yeah, I think we got there at 6. And you, usually I'm still in bed at that point. Even <laughs> That's what I was going to say. He was probably tired because it was a little early for him. Yeah. So, uh, now what did you think of uh, Richmond and... Um, Tell us a little bit about the day and how uh, everything was coming off of the truck and uh, hitting the track. I, I had a lot of fun at Richmond. It was, uh, it was kind of different just being, like, everything's been new for me this year, getting into stock cars for the first season. And uh, we, we unloaded fairly well. It took me, took me a little while to get used to the track and used to the car. Um, I think we were, like, 10th quick in practice, and then we went out and set the pole, which was kind of surprising. I, been kind of struggling qualifying this year. That, that uh, boosted my confidence a little bit. And then the, the race went really well too. I think it was the first half of the race and then dropped back to finish third, so it was good for us. But it's uh, Bill McNally. And now, is that the team owner of you and the double zero of Cole Custer? Yeah, we're both part of the Bill McNally racing. Okay, well one thing I think I should have started off with was talking a little bit about uh, your background in racing. Um, you had said it was a little different uh, early in our conversation about jumping into one of these cars out at Richmond. Why don't you go ahead and tell us a little bit about uh, your background in racing, how you got involved, at what age, and uh, what led you up to the K&N E-Series? Yeah, my, both my parents raced, my mom, my stepdad, and my dad raced sprint cars and midgets in the opening of the division, and I started when I was a about eight and quarter midgets and then I moved up to the Focus Midget Series and then I ran a legend car a few, a few times and then I think five or six late model starts ever. And then the last few years we ran the National Midget Series and the National Sprint Car Series. And then this is this is my first real transition into stock cars so it's a huge learning experience for me. So, uh, I mean, it sounds like you got a little bit of background, sort of like uh, another gentleman that used to race K&N East, uh, Kyle Larson, going from midgets and moving on up. Yeah, that, that's pretty inspiring for a guy like me with my background in racing to see him have success in stock cars. And uh, he kind of blew, blew the doors off everyone in any, any car he gets in. So that's kind of kind of gives us guys like us hope. And Jeff Gordon, Tony Stewart, Casey Kane all came from the same sprint car background. Exactly. Now, have you ever had any experience on dirt or any other uh, type of, uh, you know, series like that? Yeah, the sprint car, that's all we ran was on dirt the last few years, so. Okay. On asphalt, it's, it's still a learning experience for me. Now, did your parents know them, did they run dirt or the sprint cars too? They ran dirt and asphalt. Okay. Now, where are you originally from? And uh, I've known uh, Bill and them to be racing on the West Series. And now it seems like this year that they've uh, moved on That's over and got teams on the uh, K&N East. Um, now, where yeah. where are y'all located at uh, your shop and everything? Is that located there in North Carolina? Um, yes, yeah, we're in North Carolina. I'm actually on a Tim Schrader shop. Okay. By Canapolis. And uh, 
Bill, Bill is just Absolutely. looking forward to move his team out uh, east, and he still has the West team going with Brandon McReynolds. Um, uh, it's, it's a pretty cool deal for me and Colt to run for Bill in the East Series and get the exposure for him and Napa and Toyota on the East as well as West. Exactly. Well, you know, one of the things uh, throughout the show tonight, we've been um, talking to a lot of rookies. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's a lot of yellow stripes in this series, and it sounds like it's yes. a really good series. So it sounds like run. a good group of guys, too. Mm -hmm. I mean, so far as new guys coming in the series, they all seem to be running well. They're in good equipment. Yeah, well, I tell you what, the, the 15 and the double zero definitely, and everybody can talk to. experience, yeah. too. They've been, he's been around for, what, forever? Quite, yeah, <laughs> quite a few years. So, uh, now it's just two of y'all running out of uh, Kenny Schrader's shop down there? Teammates? Yeah. Right? You and Cole? Yeah, just me and Cole. Right, now, both of you guys development drivers for uh, Stuart Haas? It's just Gene Haas, but Haas, it's Haas Racing Development. Okay. okay. Not necessarily with Stuart Haas, but... Uh, it's... Make that clear. Yeah. <laughs> no, uh, it's still, I mean, it's still awesome. Um, y'all got... It seems like y'all got a great thing going. I mean, watching y'all during practice and the race and everything else, it looks like good communications between both of the teams and uh, being able to work together. I mean, and, and, and some of the guys that y'all have on your teams, I know you definitely want to give them a big pitch. A lot of them have been around for a while and helping out uh, a lot of great talent over the years. Yeah, everyone's been a huge help to me, especially uh, Cole and the full East season last year with him and Matt Dodd on his crew chief, so they... They sort of got, got everything going and uh, know what we need to do. And then Dave McCarty, my crew chief, has had a lot of success in the series. And uh, they've all just been a huge help for me, getting me going this early in the season, everything being new to me. So it's, it's been a ton of fun so far. Well, that was great. Now I'm looking through a list here. we got a list on our screen here. It's good. Your mother's a, a mini stock champion? Um, I, don't, I don't know about a mini stock champion. Or a mini sprint you're in, champion. You're in mini sprint. Okay. okay. California. Yeah. You and come from a pretty good line of, of or around a pretty good family of yeah, racing right here. here. You got a brother, uh, uh, Trevor. Um, he is quarter midgets. Yeah, he turned six this year, and he's been he's been running a few quarter midget races. That's mm -hmm. cool to see him get started just like I did. At six years old, I was just wanting a go kart. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so uh, that is really awesome, man, that y'all are able to do that. So your stepfather ran the Winston West and in the Bush Series? Yeah, he, he made a couple stock car starts for Gene Haas back in California. He ran the Winston West Series and a couple Bush races. Okay. And, and then my real dad, Jay Drake, was a national sprint car champion and big in the, in the open wheel stuff. So it was a pretty cool family. Yeah. Do you ask him about Georgia? Uh, no. Uh, so somebody sent me a question to ask you about what happened to you the first time you raced in Georgia. Um, that was uh, my first time ever at a new racetrack, and my parents just said to go take it easy on the first lap, and I, I was a little got a little too excited, and I just got upside down the my very first corner on the track. So <laughs> what were you what racing? Were you? It was a quarter midget when I was nine. Oh, wow. <laughs> That's a little scary. That thing's going to be a little dangerous. Yeah. Didn't it? Yeah. Were you on asphalt or dirt at that time? It was asphalt. Mm. Yeah, dirt gives a little bit. Yeah, more. asphalt doesn't give at all. Uh, now, you know, leading into this year, uh, it looks like we've got five races under our belt. And uh, what, what do you think of all the tracks that y'all visited so far? And uh, what are you looking forward to throughout the uh, 2014 season? Uh, it's, it's been a lot of fun so far. We had the five East races, and then we actually ran Phoenix in the West Series. And I had a lot of fun there, just running on a bigger track like Phoenix and Richmond. I had a lot of fun at. And then Bristol was cool just because it's Bristol. Now, uh, everybody says Bristol is an Is animal. that your favorite? I, I kind of like Phoenix. To oh, really? be honest, but Br Bristol was cool. We just had some bad luck. They were running like 11th and blew a right front tire, so that kind of gave us a bad vibe about Bristol so far. But if we go back next year when good, it'll be it, it's a lot of fun to run on. I know when we ran late models and ran Richmond, a lot of people talked about because Richmond was a short track, but you still get a little bit of drafting, and yeah. you, get to, you kind of get to the feel a little bit of drafting before you kind of jump onto a, a big track. Richmond was fun. It's it's necessarily a short track, but it kind of kind of drives like a big track in a way. 
especially for us, it gets real strung out and it's hard to run guys down just like at the end of the race on, on Saturday once we got a little gap between us. It was kind of kind of hard to chase down the guys and get around them towards the end of the race. Now, could you feel the draft when you started closing in on somebody? Not not so much. I mean, it changes a little bit, like aerodynamically, but not not like it would at you know, California and the, the real bigger tracks that the Cup has run at. Now, what kind of do you get any support from Haas so far as technology and that kind of stuff? Uh, they they're obviously a resource for us. You know, Cole's dad Joe is a general manager there, so uh, I'm sure I'm sure there's knowledge coming from the Cup shop to help us out a little bit if they can. And like Harvick, Kevin Harvick gave me some driving tips to get around Richmond when he first showed up at practice, and that that helped me out a little bit. So uh, it's obviously a good resource to have for, for all of us. Well, I tell you what, it looked like a good turnout. Would you all have about 37 cars? And uh, you, you mentioned you qualified on the pole and uh, ran half the race right on up uh, in the number one position. And uh, what happened from there? I mean, uh, we've talked about with other guys throughout the show about how tire wear and everything else, you know, they use up a lot of their tires. Yeah, that's, that's the whole deal in that series. We don't, we don't get the pit especially races like these we didn't have a halfway break and uh leaving leaving it's always hard to know how much you have to save your tires and keep those guys behind you and then being having the experience that i have i think they they just out experienced me a little bit on restarts and cole got around us and then ben got around us on the on the next one and at that point is we we're all so close and once we got behind behind them we couldn't really run them down and get around them again so I think, I don't know, I just got to work on restarts, and I think like Cole and Ben, they're running behind us riding, and I think they may have saved their stuff a little bit more mm -hmm. just riding behind us than we were trying to stay out front at the beginning. What we're going to do is ask you a couple of questions. So who's one of your biggest supporters? Uh, my mom's going to be my biggest supporter, but uh, you know, all my family and friends have given me a ton of support back at home and at school, so it's, it's cool to get all that support from them. I understand. Now, do you do you live in the Carolina area, or are you uh, going to school um, somewhere else? No, I live in North Carolina. I was born in California and moved out here when I was nine, so we're, we're living in Mooresville, North Carolina, and I've been there, been there for a while. What what What's this golf, by the way? It's, it's basically like a frisbee, and you throw it into like a basket thing on a on a golf course for discs, basically. <laughs> Uh, maybe my friends play it when we get bored. So. Right. Yeah, I, I, I've heard a couple of my friends were telling me about yeah, it. I'm like, huh? Not better than, than golf clubs. <laughs> my goodness. <laughs> Have you priced a set of golf clubes lately? Hang on. Can the, be a little uh, outrageous. I got, a, I got an old set and a guy comes in and says, like, you don't, go to, you don't show up at golf course doing things, do you? <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. Well, I'll tell you what. We're going to start wrapping it up. And uh, just uh, tell us, um, we got what? Eight more races, or how many more races you got in K&N, and do you have anything else uh, maybe in the works to do some other races, maybe out west or truck races or anything like that? Uh, we're going to focus on the k and East Series this year. I think there's 10 or so more races left, so I'm looking forward to all those. And then we're going to go back out west and run Phoenix again. Okay. And uh, I'd like to get back in the sprint car and open those stuff some more. I miss that stuff already. It was a lot of fun running on dirt with all the horsepower. So I'd like to do that a little bit if we can, but we're going to focus on the East deal this year. I gotcha. Oops. Is he still there? Uh-oh. <laughs> ah, hit the wrong freaking buttons. <laughs> I can't believe I did that. That's why. <laughs> I meant to hit the conference, because the two of them were good friends. Let's talk racing. Oh, All right, hang on. on a second, Cole. Let's talk racing. That was Nick Drake. I don't know what happened. Sorry, <laughs> sorry about that. I was trying to put you and Cole on at the same time. Hang on a second. You still there, Nick? Yep. You there, Cole? Yeah. All right. Yeah. Now, can we so, start anything between the two of you? <laughs> we got both y'all on the line at the same time, <laughs> man. But, uh... Well, uh, Nick, um, definitely want to go over who your sponsors are and give a shout out to your whole team and uh, you know and, let us know everything. And your teammate. And your teammate. 
Sunglasses. You probably paid a little bit more than what, what he paid. Um, I get a really good deal. <laughs> <laughs> Bet not as good a deal as he got. <laughs> no, he gets the previous. I, I get I, I get a really good deal though. Mm-hmm. Well, you got any other uh, sponsors you want to give a big shout out to? Uh, just just all everyone that supports us, Napa, Toyota, and Honda, and all the big three that uh, keep this deal rolling throughout the year. So you can't thank them enough. I got you. Well, hey, we definitely appreciate you calling in. Let's talk racing and uh, looking forward to seeing you some more. You got anything you want to say to Cole? Cole may be at the shop working and you may be at home. What's, you know, is that true, Cole? I'm just reacting on my dad right now. <laughs> <laughs> you could have made something up. <laughs> well, you could have got something good going. Exactly. So, well, uh, Nick, appreciate you calling in, man, and uh, we look forward to talking to you uh, some more throughout 2014. All right, thanks for having me on. Thank right. you. Thanks, bud. Cole Custer, how you doing? Good, how are you? Good, good. Uh, really took the win the other day uh, at Richmond, didn't you? Yeah, I mean, we uh, had a great race. We really come get the win. Well, I tell you what, between the two nav cars being up front, you really had to pay attention to the numbers there. I mean, both y'all were going back and forth, and it was like, oh, no, it's the 15 up front. No, it's the double zero up front. So it uh, looks like y'all had a really good race and uh, good competition out there. And uh, we just want to definitely go over everything on Saturday. I mean, of course, it, we've said many times throughout the show how it started at 9 a.m. and NASCAR got the, the race in and everything for the K&N East. Uh, Tell us how y'all's day was. Uh, let's just start with uh, Friday with uh, qualifying. Yeah, I mean, in qualifying, we, uh, well, practice day, we uh, we, were, we had a problem in first practice, but we missed a lot of the first practice. And then uh, second practice, we got going, and we uh, just didn't get the most out of our uh, qualifying run. But then in qualifying, I felt like, I mean, we were, when I got out of the car, I thought we were definitely going to get the pole. And then just when it comes up and just, uh, it was about 200 better, so it just knocked us off. And then uh, it was great those teams, two Navigars on the front row. I think we both, everybody was kind of fighting for grip, I think, the whole weekend. So I think we just our stuff the best. Right. But, but uh, in the race, I just kind of, it was a tire comp. We had to stay with tires a lot. So I was just kind of riding behind Nick. And then uh, once I got the restart figured out, I was able to get him on a restart and just uh, kind of just tried to maintain from there and just come up to win. Now, did you, when you were running behind, were you just trying to save your tires and, and kind of push them a little bit? Yeah, I mean, like, I was trying to stay probably within five, five to seven car lengths, just to try and, try and push them a little bit and try and just get them to work a little bit harder. But uh, the whole time, I was just trying to keep it as straight as possible. I don't think I could it, like, put the tire the first 50 laps and then... When I got by him, I started running a little bit faster, and uh, I, I for sure thought that Ben was going to get me, but we ended up just holding on for it. But I tell you what, uh, what did you think about, you know, Friday night, it seemed like it was a long, long day at the racetrack. And uh, I think uh, NASCAR did everything they can to try to get that race in. And then, of course, uh, having to come back the next morning, uh, what did you think of the track conditions uh, Saturday morning? And uh, you know, how it felt on, you know, being in the race car. Uh, I mean, I thought it was cool. I mean, be on the same day as the cup race, but uh, I really didn't feel all that much of a difference from, I mean, any other session that we've had in that weekend. The track was just kind of seemed like it just stayed the same the whole time. It was just really slick. I mean, nobody could really get anything out of it, it seemed like, and it was just, it was all about trying to get drive off the corner. Do you think it would have been any difference between uh, y'all racing uh, Friday night when it was a lot cooler to uh, you know racing Saturday morning with uh, the you know the sun out and it's a little being a little bit warmer? I mean, it might have been a little bit better at night, but I don't think it. Uh, I don't think it would have changed drastically. I mean, whenever we went out, it seemed like I mean it was a little bit worse when we were out in the heat, but it wasn't. Uh, it wasn't that drastically different. So I think it would have been. And the same outcome with a, with a different time, I think. 
I got you. Now, uh, leading up to this year, you raced uh, K&N East last year. And did you do the full season for K&N? Yeah. But you were running under uh, Haas Motorsports at that time, weren't you? Yeah. And then this year, uh, you're, of course, being teammates with uh, uh, Nick Drake. And y'all are racing with the Napa team and Bill McNally? Yep. Okay. So, uh, sounds like y'all have really got something good together, uh, great teams, uh, working well together. I saw y'all pitting down there together throughout the day uh, for practice and everything else. So, it seems like y'all have got a, a very good working relationship and uh, the teams work, to, work well together. Yeah, I mean, we've had uh, our guys have all known each other for a pretty long time. They all get along pretty well. And I think I have a great crew chief. His name's uh, Matt Goff, but I think he's really good. And, uh, I think Nick's crew chief is really good too, and I think we started a great program, and I think we made an awesome part of the track, and I mean, uh, Bill's been awesome to work with, and, and Napa, and Gene Hall, so I think it shows an all-star operation. But well, last year, you ended up picking up, uh, how many wins did you pick up uh, in the 2013 year for K&N East? Uh, I picked up uh, two, I Iowa and New Hampshire. New Hampshire. I like how you say he picked them up because it's like it's really easy. Oh to yeah. <laughs> well, I saw him in Victory Lane. He was picking up the trophy really easy. Yes, uh, what did you think of that hat dance, man? Every time I turned around, y'all were uh, changing hats every two seconds. Yeah, we uh, we have a good amount of uh, sponsors, so we have to just uh, you take a while, Victory Lane. Oh yeah, well, that's a good thing. Well, it's yeah. always nice to be down there. <laughs> now, did you uh, get any driving tips from Kevin, like uh, Drake did? Uh, no, I, I didn't uh, really ask any of the truck drivers if any other questions, but I had been there last year, and I just I felt like I knew what, what I wanted to come into the race. So where, where did you start racing in? I started racing when I was five in uh, Port of it sounds like a lot of the guys that uh, we have spoke to tonight have really started off in quarter divisions mm -hmm. and worked their way on up. I mean, that's really awesome. Um, you know, in this area, within Virginia, a lot of people, uh, you know, like the Edwardses and guys like that started off in carts, motorcycles and stuff and, and worked up. Uh, it sounds like, you know, did you do any uh, sprint car um, coming up, and, you know, before you got into the King and East? I did some uh, focus major stuff focus. and then... Uh, I'm actually, I just turned old enough to drive a small midget, so I'm going to do some of that stuff this year. So how old are you? I'm uh, 16. 16. Now, you got any uh, truck races planned? Yeah, we got uh, eight more truck races planned at uh, all mile and under tracks and gateway and road course. So we're uh, looking forward to those, too. Now, what tracks are y'all going to be visiting uh, off the top of your head with uh, the truck series? Where's your first outing going to be? Well, we went to Martinsville, and then we're going to Dover, we got Iowa, and Phoenix, and uh, uh, Mosport, I think it's called, and uh, Gateway. I thought there was less tracks than that that you could run. Yeah, now you've got experience racing out at Dover uh, in the Canaan East and also Iowa, which y'all will be uh, visiting here within the next couple of weeks. Yeah, I mean, uh, we're really looking forward to Iowa. I mean, we've always run really good there. And, and all the tracks that we're going up to are, I think I can really run good at. So we're really looking forward to those and we'll see what happens. Now, you running, whose truck team are you going to be running for? It's uh, the Haas Racing Team, same thing as uh, what we ran last year. And we got uh, Joe Shear, the crew chief, and it's pretty much the same K N team, though. Okay. Now, how'd you fare at, at Martinsville? We, uh, we didn't get to qualify because we got rained out, so we kind of bummed about that. We thought we were going to do really good. But well, we started nice and ran the top 10 of the day, and then we just got shuffled around, had a third outside, ended up 12. Yeah, I mean, when you start on the outside of Martinsville, it's just like you might, you're going to give four, at least four spots up. Yeah. Now, what do you think, Cole, about jumping in from a Canon and East uh, car to uh, uh, a truck, um, the Camping World Truck Series? Uh, what, what difference did you see? I mean, I, I know there's got to be a, a tremendous difference jumping in from a car to a, a truck. Uh, well, the biggest difference is just the tire, because they run on a radial tire instead of a bias. So that tire, I feel like, is a lot better. It has a lot more grip. Uh-huh. So it's a lot less forgiving. It's just, like, if you push it, push it too far, it just wants it to just break out in the really loose on you and just come right back from under you. So... 
that's one of the setbacks from this site. I mean, overall, I think it's uh, it's not too big of a transition, and I think I mean we're running everybody's gone testing so far really like fast, so we I think we'll be pretty good this year. Now the other question that we had, uh, Roger just had from a uh, a caller, want to know when is your next truck race again? It's in Dover, I think in a uh, month or so. In a month yeah. or so? Okay. Yeah, the week after Labor Day. That's like a Wednesday race, I think. Wednesday or Thursday. Okay. Well, I tell you, well, you know, you're getting a lot of experience, man. 16 years old, you got a lot to be proud of. Your team, uh, all of y'all guys got a lot to be proud of. You, you did a heck of a job this weekend in Richmond. I know you're looking forward to the rest of the 2014 season. Uh, and to be able to have eight truck races at 16, that, that's just totally awesome. I mean, your experience, the resume is going to look awesome by the time you, you turn 21 <laughs> years old. Thank you. So, uh, hey, uh, before we wrap it up and everything, uh, I know you want to give a big shout out to uh, all your sponsors, uh, your, your supporters, and uh, also your uh, crew and everybody. Yeah, I mean, I'd like to thank Napa Auto Parts. They've helped us a lot this year, and Gene uh, Hogg and Hogg on the Nation, and uh, Wiley X. They make some sick sunglasses, and uh, just got some of those, so we should check out <coughs> them, and uh, just everybody, all the crew that helps us, and uh, all the guys both great cars, so I just gotta thank everybody who else this deal. Yeah, I gotta figure out how to get on this Wiley X. I, I tell you, everybody we've been talking to is <laughs> getting these Wiley X. I mean, we're definitely gonna be having to hang out down there at the double zero and the 15 car. You know, something. You know? But uh, hey, we want to wish you uh, the best of luck uh, heading into Iowa. From what I remember, it's May 17th. Think so. Okay, going a long way out there. It's a wonderful track. I know you've uh, you've been out there before, and you said you picked up uh, one of your wins out there. So uh, we look forward to uh, talking to you some more here on Let's Talk Racing uh, within the 2014 season. Thanks, thanks for having me on the show. All right, thank you. All right, Carl. Thanks, bud. Thanks. I'm just gonna pull some information out of you. Uh, <laughs> sometimes you you got to do that with. Uh, yeah. yeah. Some of the I want to talk about these Wiley X sunglasses. Uh, I know, right? I, I mean, know. Roger goes down there. Now, Roger, who do well, we, we work had... for? Who do we work for? Right. Roger. Yeah. Okay. At least, at least Roger saw right. me. Hey, check ain't no good. At least we get some glasses. Right? I mean, the meals are wonderful. <laughs> but you know what I'm saying? But he got one pair of Wiley X. Show us your one pair of Wiley X. Oh, I got three. Oh. oh. He got me oh. and three. Oh, oh. Me oh so he did get us a pair. He got you a pair. Yeah. Looks like me and you got a pair. Let's talk racing. Hey, this is Grant Entenger. Hey, hey, bud, how, how you doing? doing bud? Hey, Grant, we got a question to ask you right off the start. Are you? Do you got Wally X as a, as a sponsor? I'm sorry, say that one more time. Do you have uh, Wally X uh, sunglasses as a sponsor? Well, sure, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're, trying, we're trying to get sunglasses down right. here. Everybody we talk to is on the plan except us. Yeah, yeah. We're on the plan with anybody that wants to write a check. <laughs> <laughs> I'm with you on that one. Hey, man, so uh, how's the 2014 season been for you so it far? Looks like it's going great. I think it has. I mean, uh, from right here, you've won three in a row. It's hard to ask for much more than what we got so far, so it's just been an incredible start to the season. And I think uh, that ties the record, three in a row, and from what Roger was telling me and Scott earlier, nobody has gotten four in a row in the Not yet. yet. Yet, yet. Uh, yeah, we've, uh, we've definitely got, got an opportunity for it, but uh, you, you know, as well as I do, anything can happen at Talladega. So uh, hopefully we're on the get into that this weekend, but, uh, but if not, it, you know, it, it's been an incredible ride at this point. Yeah, I mean, did you pinch yourself? Because, I mean, things like that don't happen all the Every time, yeah. Uh, three in a row, that's totally awesome. I mean, you can't beat nothing like that. Yeah. Are you still high from it? <laughs> Oh, absolutely. So uh, it's just uh, it's just an incredible feeling. And, you know, we, we had so many that were so close that we let slip away, and now we've, we've had a few uh, go our way, and, and they're, they're starting to pile up a little bit. It's just uh, they're, they're, there's no, no better feeling because, because we can appreciate it from the other side of the fence as well. Exactly. Well, tell us a little bit. I mean, your name's been around racing for a while. Tell us a little bit uh, how you got started. Tell us uh, all the divisions you've been in. I know this is going to take a while, but uh, <laughs> go ahead and give us a rundown on uh, Grant himself. I, I guess a long, long time ago it started right here 
right here where we're at at Talladega. Uh huh. And, and me and my old man would, would go up here uh, every year, and and, uh, and that, that was that was you know what what started it all, I guess. And um and then my dad had a client that raced at the local track there in Mobile, and we we go out to race with them. And uh, when I was eleven, started racing go karts and and I uh, moved into the Legends cars and the late models and. And as soon as I graduated uh, college from, from University of South Alabama, I, I moved to Charlotte. I, I knew what I wanted to do was, was race and, and um, started working for Andy Belmont Racing, uh, Arca team there, and driving the hauler, and ended up driving the, the starting bar car a few times, and, and, um, and qualified that pretty good, and enough to, to convince our sponsors to, to, to run a few Arca races, and, and you know, been, been fortunate to to now uh, to, to be with some good guys and drove full time for Algar Motorsports in 2011 and, and uh, been doing some hair miss stuff here and there uh, ever since then and, and um, got with Team BCR last year and, and uh, like y'all mentioned we, we had an unbelievable start to the season so uh, hopefully we can just uh, keep it all going. Yeah, definitely. Um, now last year, what what did what was uh, your role last year? Uh, you were in ARCA, and how many races did you end up racing, and did you race any other series in the 2013 season? In 2013, I did not race any other series other than, than ARCA, but I should say we, we raced the Snowball Derby. We, we did a couple of little late model shows, um, finished second down there this year in December. Um, but but we, ran, uh, we ran eight ARCA races, I mean, we won two of them, so, you know, it's just a um, pretty, uh, pretty, pretty cool deal. Um, you know, getting with Team PCR, we, we still have some, some really great partners in Case Side Motor Honey, Advanced Auto Parts, North USA, and Stanley Industries that have, you know, stepped up to the plate and, and made this deal happen. So we don't know, we don't know how many races we're going to get through yet this year. Um, you know, it, it's, a, it, it's a work in progress, but, but I'll tell you what, the ones we have been through, we've, uh, we've been making the most of them. You definitely have. Now, what is Motor Honey? Motor honey is an oil additive that helps your helps your fuel mileage, helps your motor live longer, and uh, you need to buy some. It has been around for a long time, and you know, Advanced Auto Parts is helping out with their promotion this year. But the company has actually been around for over 90 years now. So, oh, huh. um, yeah, because I've never heard of them before. Partner, yep, we're well, partnering with this last year, and, and uh, I'll tell you what, it's a, it's a good product, and it's. it's Pretty, uh, pretty honored to be partnered with. Yeah, I'm gonna have to get some because I have to get on advanced auto parts. I ain't and, uh, never won three in a row, so uh, <laughs> I, I've only raced. Well, I've only won one in a row. <laughs> <laughs> how many you been upside down in a row? Yeah, asking that. One how in you, a row. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, now, like you said, you're heading to Talladega this weekend. You're gonna be looking for that fourth victory and uh, give us some insight on what you're looking for and uh, what you're looking at happening. You know, I'm uh, very, very lucky to, to be uh, in a really good car, like I said, from Team PCR and all those guys, because this is the car we won Daytona with. So I know when we unload, we're, we're going to be quick, and um, hopefully we're in the right position there at the end of the race. We uh, I had a teammate this weekend, and Justin Allison, and, and um, you know, hopefully that comes into play. He, he always makes these big plans, and it's really hard for him to follow through because there's, there's so many other guys out there, and there's so many there, boys, but... But hopefully we're able to, to work ourselves to the front. Uh, hopefully, hopefully we both have strong patience. Now you guys can't bump draft in these things, right? Not supposed to. Um, we're, we're not supposed to bump in the corner. We can do a little bit on the straightaway. So it doesn't work, you know, exactly the same way as the cup cars maybe. But, um, you know, the, in, in my opinion, it's, it's really good racing. It's pack racing. And they changed the rules package around a little bit this year in ARCA series. And, and provided for some good passing at Daytona, so I look for, for more of that at Talladega. Usually, we in the Arctic Series, there, there's more side-by-side -side racing, more three-wide racing at Talladega than there is at Daytona. So, yeah, everybody says Talladega is a lot easier than Daytona because it's not nearly as slick, I guess. I, I wouldn't say easier. Well, maybe that's wrong. Right. It's different, you know, it's it's wider, so they're just to, to make a move. But um, I wouldn't call it easier. It's just just different, I would say. Now, are you guys using a different engine package for uh, for the plate races, or for you know Daytona and Talladega? Like uh, yeah, yeah, we we definitely we run the restrictor plates at Daytona and Talladega. 
in our RV cars are so yeah, sleek, so they, they do have to, to give us pretty small restrictor plates, but, but that's one of the rules changes ARCA made this year is they, they put a little bit more drag in the car, they put bigger spoilers on it, and they gave us a little bit more horsepower. And, and I feel like that's why it was a little bit better race there at Daytona, and, and like you said, usually, usually, in my opinion anyway, Talladega is a little bit better uh, race, just uh, more side by side, there's, there's a middle groove there, and there's a top groove a lot of times, so... Uh, you know, hopefully, uh, hopefully that's the case on Saturday. Yeah, I just didn't know if y'all run like a Roush motor because I know some of the guys go to some of the bigger teams when they come to these big tracks. We run Roush eight engines, and uh, you know we're we're definitely partnering with some good guys there. That's this is the, the exact same motor that, that we ran with at Daytona, so I know we got a good piece. Now, do y'all use them for the whole season or just for the plate races? We do, we do. Okay. We run them for the whole season. Okay. Well. Well, that, that kind of helps get three in a row. Oh, yeah. Well, absolutely. So we we got good horsepower, and we got good people like that behind us, and around shade engines, and, and Doug Yates, they have been nothing but good to our team. And, and uh, you know, just uh, just really lucky. You know, Howard and Paula Dixon, our team owners, are, are trying to give us what we need to, uh, to, to get it done, and, and right now that's the direction we're going. So hopefully, uh, hopefully like I said, we can, uh, we can keep it all going. And, you know, it's a, it's a long ways away, and, and, and we're, we're not prepared for it at all, but uh, it, it would be some kind of cool way if we could get enough partner and partners on board to, to run for a championship and, and give, uh, give Frank Kimmel a run for his money. Now, uh, where are y'all based out of? Are y'all based out of Carolina, too? Mooresville, North Carolina. Right. Okay. And uh, like you said, I guess your goal for 2014 is to win that championship and take as many wins as you possibly can, right? Absolutely. So we, we've gotten off to a good start so far. It's just uh, we need to we need to keep this momentum rolling. Now, what track uh, are you looking forward to uh, after winning if this weekend at Talladega? What other tracks are you looking forward to uh, heading to? You know, I, I'm actually uh, I'm right around uh, my, my old car owner right now, Mike Algar. Mm -hmm. He always preached to me when I drove for him. The next race is the most important one. Uh, you know, uh, yeah, I, I started looking at it like that way. I don't look so far ahead as I used to. Right. Um, so, so you know, when we leave Talladega, the, the next one is going to be important, and that one's going to be Toledo. But, uh, but right now, uh, I'm 100 percent focused on, on putting ourselves in a position to, to win another race, and, and that that starts right here at Talladega. So. Uh, you know that anything can happen here, and usually does. And just hopefully, hopefully we're on the good side of it. Well, we wish you luck here from Let's Talk Race, and we hope we can uh, talk to you some more. You want to give a shout out to all your sponsors, supporters, and uh, your team. Absolutely, Kayside Motor Honey, Advanced Auto Parts, Worth USA, Stanley Industries, CG Contracting. There's, there's some big guys this weekend. Yeah, man, everybody that, that dedicates their time and comes and helps us. We're, we're still operating on, uh, on guys from, from home and, and uh, you know, everybody that can help us and, and make this deal happen. We, uh, we we got a lot of people behind the scenes that, that you know, they, they have full-time jobs. They, they, they have other other ways to, to uh, supplement their income and they still find a way to come help us. So, uh, man, we, we, we got many people that are... Uh, that are helping us do this, it's just impossible to thank them all, but, uh, but, but I'd like to try to. I think people don't really understand, Grant, how much uh, people put their heart and soul into these cars. Uh, <laughs> a lot of guys, they, they, they're like us. We work during the day and we do things uh, on the weekends that we love to do. You know, the worst thing that I hear is some of the, well, that's the worst thing, but some of the fans, they say they don't understand why somebody doesn't race as hard for a win. I mean, yeah. we race as hard as we can. Nobody gives anybody anything. Exactly. Somebody else just earns it. Exactly. Absolutely. We want to ask you, uh, we got a question from a fan, um, and w one of the questions is, is uh, when are you going to be back in a truck? Uh, it's hard saying, you know. Um, hopefully saying, you know, uh, obviously my, my sole focus is to keep keep running these ARCA races and keep keep on the winning track this year and hopefully be, be running for a championship. But, but like I said, that right now that's a little bit far-fetched. I would love to do some, some truck racing and, and uh, I'll, I'll let everybody know that, but it's just uh, <laughs> nothing. Nothing is, is in the works for right now. But, but hopefully, some stuff comes comes around for for the second half of the season. Now, have you gotten a nickname yet out of winning the first three races like three time or Mister April or something? You know. <laughs> no, not yet. Not yet. So. Uh, All right. Well, if you uh, win, three peat. Uh, through the past, so 
I don't know if any of them I should be proud of or not. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you win this weekend, we'll have to think of a good nickname for you. All right, that, that sounds good. Now, do you have a, an embarrassment moment, um, an embarrassing moment in racing? I don't have any. Uh, lots of moments in <laughs> it's your most memorable yeah, yeah. one. What's a good one? Yeah, I tell you what, the most recent one is uh, <laughs> is we actually got into a tango in a late model race about, I believe this was two years ago at Pensacola, and a uh, guy actually hit me under caution, completely destroyed the car, <laughs> and um, and I tried to get out of the car, and he hit me again. <laughs> So you were trying to get out of the car while he was still on the racetrack? Really? Yeah, I'll tell you what, it, it could have hurt me, but it didn't. And it just made me mad. And it, he uh, he stalled his car out when he did it. I crawled out of my car, and I went straight through his passenger door trying to get to him. And I couldn't get to him. I, I saw everybody made fun of me later. He's like, why didn't you go on the driver's side? <laughs> and the, the passenger side was right there, so I just jumped in it. And, uh, and, and trying to strangle him, but I couldn't. I guess it, it's a good thing it all worked out. Uh, but that's, that's probably the most embarrassing one I recently, anyway. Did you have to go to the big trailer after that and sit down and uh, give a detail of all the events? Uh, luckily, it was a late model race. Uh, a little bit less structured than, than the Arca <laughs> series. So, so I didn't have to go sit in the big trailer. They didn't keep my hands flat. But, uh, but that was pretty disappointing that they had our cars worn out uh, like that. You know, uh, it's it's just like any kind of race. Anything happens, and you know, a lot of times it does. So, so, so what led up to him running into you? You know, there there was a tangle back and forth. He uh, he hit me a little bit and spun me out. So, well, I hit him a little bit and spun him out. <laughs> I guess he's tit for tat, right? Time around it, and uh, so so like I said, I, I was riding around there and then cautioning. <laughs> Right out he pulled a cold trickle on oh, you. Yeah. <laughs> yep, yep. He saw Days of Thunder the night before. And he wanted to try that. <laughs> so, well. uh, I always say at the arena, if somebody, if somebody wrecks me good again, I'm going to go over there and I'm going to just leave my car on the track because they'll stop the race. Uh -huh. And then I'm going to go over and turn the car over, turn the car off through the window and then just flip his ass over <laughs> on the racetrack. <laughs> or maybe just rip the spark plug more off so he can't finish. I've never seen anybody rip the spark plug right out. That'd be a good one. That would. That would. Something like that. Yeah. <laughs> so. I've been thinking about it. I've had a lot of time. I got flipped over earlier, so I've had a lot of time to think about it. He's been on his head once too many times. <laughs> yeah, I understand. Well, hey, uh, I tell you what, we appreciate you uh, calling in and talking to us on Let's Start Racing. We hope to talk to you a lot more throughout the 2014 year. Good luck this weekend at Talladega, and uh, hopefully we'll be talking to a... Uh, Poor Peter. Yeah. We'll call him Quadro Kid. Appreciate you having me on the show. All righty. We appreciate you, and uh, we'll be talking to you here soon. Good hey, luck this hey weekend. Grant. Grant, I already got a nickname for you. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Quadro Kid. <laughs> Hopefully that sticks. Hopefully we're able to pull it off. <laughs> we can and we'll take it. All right. <laughs> you got it here. All right. Thanks Good luck, again. Man. No, that's pretty cool. That's pretty funny. All right, now we haven't we haven't said anything any anything at all about the Denny Hamlin invitation. You know, I, I don't heard, think it was as much. I didn't I didn't really heard much about it. I, I heard was as I heard there was a ton of people there. I heard it was a ton, a mm -hmm. sellout. Oh, I'm um, sure. I heard that it was action packed. I heard it was uh, great racing. But the thing that I want to talk about is we had a lot of local guys mm -hmm. down there that ran well. Yeah, uh, is it Kyle? Waltz or is oh, it Kyle Waltz? I, yep. I get all of them oh, mixed was, up. Was, was it, it Kyle? Kyle, Kyle Waltz, yeah. Okay, they had lead majority of the race and uh, really put on a heck of a show from what I hear. Yeah, I and, guess he got a little bump and run on him or something. Yeah, uh, you know, I'm just hearing what I hear from hearsay, yeah. but I heard that uh, it was one heck of a race out there. So, yeah. but, and he's done a good job over at Langley. Oh, he, he has. He's a young kid. Great. Um, and, and Nick Smith ran well out there, I think. Uh, I think Greg ran top ten, I think. Yeah, he ran something. real well. Um, but it, it's great. You know, it, it was good racing out there at Richmond when they had it at Richmond the last two or three years. But uh, I think they've got it back to that short track uh, atmosphere. Oh, yeah. It's packed the stands, um, and people loved it. Got calls well, throughout think, the night. Yeah, I think you get the... The guys we're we're used to seeing the, the local guys kind of on a fair track to them to be able to run against some of the big names, right? 
So, you know, they're, they're just kind of like, you know, racing on your own turf, per se. But no, it was funny because I saw Lee pull him in at the Canaan in uh, autograph session. And I was like, you know, I didn't hear about you. Well, he gave his car up. He says uh, he let Matt Kenseth drive his car. So uh, that was, you know, I was like, well, you know, I, I knew I didn't hear your name. And Lee Pullman is the name you're going to hear in late model, usually. Yeah. Out at Motor Mile, Sobo, and everybody everywhere else. But uh, it was, um, from what I understand, it was definitely a, a good event. Glad to see everything went well, and it was a good, safe race. And it uh, seems like everybody had a good time. You know, we were just trying to cut a day off the schedule at, at Richmond to... I'm not sure what exactly happened with everything. I mean, it could have been logistics. Uh, I'm not really sure. But... Uh, Again, it was great racing for a Thursday night, and uh, it seems like the guys made it down there, and a lot of the k &N guys and Cup guys made it back. So uh, mm -hmm. just glad to see everything went good. Number one, weather cooperated. That was the number one thing, and uh, great racing for a lot of fans to be able to see. Yeah, no, it definitely, definitely. I would like to go see it. It's just too far for you to go during the week. Yeah. Yeah, I, I would. Granted, I mean, a lot of people want to have it come to Langley, and they apparently won out of South Boston. Yeah, I mean, and it's big bragging rights. I mean, a lot of cup guys build a late model just to go over and run that. Yeah. I mean, you take you take the guys like Denny, you take the guys like uh, Kyle. Every, you know, I mean, of course they got some good sponsors on those cars, but mm -hmm. I mean, there, there's a lot of hard work poured into those cars. And uh, you know, I imagine that's not the only race that they race it in, but uh, you know, they probably have it, you know, throughout the year. But it, uh, it was good to be able to see that. Thing. I know Kyle races quite a few late model oh, yeah. races, and they, I mean, he's got a whole set up there with these guys. Um, but definitely good racing. I'm glad to hear everything went real good out there. Lynn Carroll and them guys put on a great show from what I hear uh, on the official standpoint. And uh, the racers just put on a great show. So and that's that's what it's all about. I mean, people come out and like it's, we talked about. It's entertainment. About, people exactly. say it's a race. That's no, honestly, it's entertainment. I mean, we don't just We're in an open it up. Yeah. yeah. We just don't open up the gates at four and everybody start piling in. It, it took a lot of... Uh, Hard work, planning, and everything looks like it came out good. Mm -hmm. So hopefully next year we'll uh, definitely see some more Denny Hamlin Invitational, and uh, we'll see where everything's going to be. I'm going. sure it's a lot less expensive for late model guys to run it compared to running Richmond. I don't know. Um, you know, tire tires. Uh, I imagine it's the same amount of tires that you're buying. I mean, gear wise, I guess it's it's different. But, I don't know um, if they still had like the same rules. I know like at Richmond, everybody had to have a pit crew uniform to go over the wall. Yeah. And and then everybody was barring suits to you know to have a team to go over the wall. So I know some of the guys. I mean, they needed twenty five grand just to 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 go to Richmond to run it. Right. But I guess what I don't know what it cost to enter and, and those type of things. But that was the number I heard. I can't imagine it would cost anywhere near that to go to yeah, so bad. Yeah. And so much history at Sobo. And if you if, if nobody's ever been to South Boston, it's such a small town. Mm -hmm. The track has got so much history with just big names that have been there. I mean the Burtons, the Saddlers and everybody else. It's just it's just a, a small town with just a lot of racing history. So really glad to see everything went well for those guys. Yeah, yeah. I want to say on, on the Nationwide car that Kevin Harvick won in the Tide car, and, and it was kind of a thing of, uh, I got to know Tim Plogger, which was uh, one of the merchandisers for Kroger, and, and he passed away a few days before the Kroger 200, 250 at Martinsville. Right. And uh, he put that Tide deal together. He's always putting deals together with, with Kevin, and he talked very highly of Kevin of helping to bring product through the store in order to fund the racing. But Tim put a lot of those deals together for Kevin. Uh, the you know the Tide car was him. He Here's designed your list that car. of the cars that took um, yeah. participated. But they put him on the car for Kevin to get the win, and he brought uh, Tim's family in to to be there. So that was pretty. That's cool. a great honor to be able to do something yeah. like that. So yeah. that's pretty cool. Well, definitely pretty cool. Um, looking at the uh, entry list, I mean, you've got, what, 30? I'm counting real quick. you probably got over 40-some cars there. Yeah. A lot of big names. Uh, Peyton Sellers, Nick uh, Smith. Um, and some old, some names Steven people probably Wallace, are. Yeah. Jeff Burton. Uh, yeah. Jeff yeah. Burton, C. Uh, Falk. Lynn O'Neill was out there. Yeah. Did he run? Yeah, he was out there. He's the number 13. Okay. okay. Oh, yeah, he was driving. I didn't know if he was going to run. He Timothy was Peters sure. was out there in his number 17 car. Right. Yeah. Uh, of course, Matt Kenseth was out there. Hermie Sadler. Curtis yeah, Markham. Old school guy. I would say Curtis Markham. Yeah. I don't know if you remember Curtis back in the day. Oh, when, yeah. I mean, when I first got into late model, we showed up at Richmond International. And uh, 
he had just signed a deal with the North Series, and, and he had that 33 skull team there, and everybody's like, oh, man, go see what Curtis is running. How fast is Curtis? I mean, that's everybody was worried about was Curtis. Right. Well, uh, another name uh, I just saw on there, George Brunholz the third. As you know, I mean, he races with the Southern Mods. He's been their champion for uh, quite a few years. Mm -hmm. He was in a late model. Um, C. E. Fox and C. Greg Fox. Edwards, both. And uh, it, now I'm not sure how you say this, but this gentleman also races Canyon East, I believe. Kaz Grola. Oh, Gal, Gal, oh Kaz Grela. Grela. Yeah, yeah. Grela. Yeah. Yes. So uh, I know uh, he he's was, done a good job. Yeah, oh, very and your good. buddy Ryan Priestley. Ryan Priest from the Northern Modified Division. I see his name on there. So uh, David Reagan. Yeah. Yeah. The 77 car. Uh, Matt Bowling. So uh, and Matt he, was and Matt was the winner. Yeah. So yeah. that was really good. Uh, short track guy back there. Um, he does a lot of racing out at uh, Motor Mile, South mm -hmm. Boston, I believe. So uh, really great to be able to see all those names. And uh, I know it's a great experience for them to be able to, uh, you know, participate with some of the cup drivers and be able to enter the Denny Hamlin Invitational and being at South Boston. So uh, mm -hmm. great right, week. Right. Now we'll end up moving into, uh, where do we go this week? Talladega. Talladega. Tadega. So, be really interesting. Great track with a lot of history. Good deal. Anyway, so everybody good with what we had going on tonight? Was anything else? We didn't even talk about the fight. Oh, yeah. Fight. Casey Mears. Oh, yeah. Y'all uh, yeah. got to talk about that. <laughs> you stay I can't that. talk about that. So, I'll sit over here and play on the internet. Yeah, well, we didn't even, even talk about Andy's issue at Langley either. Well, yeah, I can't talk about that either. Uh, that was just one of those Andy things, said yeah. it would be nice if an official would take it at least would say, <laughs> you know, apologize that he got I love, they love Andy to death. Andy's a great driver. He's, he oh, talked very highly to you. Did he talk? Yeah, he did. He okay. did. That's like, are we talking about the same guy? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> He did say that too. But we can't comment on anything, but it was good racing um, down there for the Southern Modifieds when they were at Langley. It was a great race. It was. It was. And then uh, we we were going to Caraway and uh, drove all the way down there, and no more made it down there. And of course, the rain was a factor. And we've we've had that a couple of times throughout the year um, at Caraway with rain coming in. But you know, Mother Nature's hard. Where is next race? Uh, right now, uh, the Southern Modifieds have got a uh, a break. Our next race will be July the fourth at Caraway. And uh, that'll be a Friday race. And Is then, that the uh, makeup for? No, that's always a scheduled event for Caraway. Okay. Um, they always have the July 4th race. It's always a big event. Um, Maybe they'll have a double header that night. I, I don't know. I, I don't that know nothing about it. Uh, you know, I know that they are, they'll, uh, they'll definitely put on a good show. It'll be uh, great. Guys usually got a lot of time to be able to get themselves prepared for that race. Mm -hmm. And then uh, usually, uh, I don't know what the schedule's going to be like. Uh, NASCAR hasn't come out with it yet. But then after that, we uh, end up going to Bowman Gray. And um, like I've always told everybody, if you've never been to Bowman Gray, when it's is Bowman Gray? I believe that is my class reunion is August the 2nd, so it's August the 9th. I was trying to play everything around my class reunion. If I was going to take the weekend <laughs> off or whatever. Um, it's my 10-year class reunion. Yeah, right. <laughs> I was going to uh, say that. I knew you were. <laughs> yeah, she was over there going, yeah, what the heck? I was <laughs> over there thinking, wait a minute. There's no way that guy's 28. <laughs> hey, I didn't hey, say I was the smartest guy. I could have graduated when I was 28 years old. Hey, now but you, didn't, did you, you didn't say it was your high school reunion, did you? I didn't you? say that either. No, no, yeah, yeah, that that could have been my college reunion. Mm -hmm. But, uh, yeah, it's going to be real interesting to go to Bowman Gray. Um, when we usually go there, it's bad thing is it's hot in August, it's a tight track, and it's our Bristol. You know, moves are flying, and everybody's, you oh, know, it's 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 a hot tipper. It's, you know, it's a Saturday it's race. It's a Saturday race, and uh, what they usually do the week, the night before, is they have uh, their their modified race. for Because modified racing at Bowman Gray is the big deal. Oh, it's that okay. is the deal. It's the Myers boys. It's the Tim Browns. Right, yeah. um, you know, Andy's helping Frank Fleming, which is an ideal racing car. Uh, you know, it's just, it's a big time. People talk about this all during the week. You know, modified racing at Bowman Gray is some of the most exciting racing How that you'll far see. Is Bowman Gray? Yeah, Bowman Gray, well, you gotta think, I got a house here in Virginia, got one in <laughs> Carolina. From uh, here, it's uh, gonna be in Winston Salem. It's uh, probably about a five hour drive oh, was it from here in Hampton. Uh, it's just, you gotta go, man. You gotta go. It's, it's well, one of those. Jack in there. You think Jack would even ride with me? Do you want to ride with Jack? <laughs> That's I another mean, question, right? The thing is, I see the way y'all get along, and until tonight, Jack not being here, I see, I'm really be, a nice guy. You really are. <laughs> I really like you. That scene, I like Jack too. I do like Jack. Now wait a minute, you gotta choose a side. 
don't do that to me yet, okay? I don't want this to be a case of mirror. Mirror brace type deal. Uh, yeah, Jack's a good sized guy. Yeah, he is. <laughs> I was walking down uh, the back of pit road, I, and when I walk, I walk with my head down, and I'm just talking away, and not to myself. I'm usually on the radio, and all of a sudden, this big guy just comes out of nowhere and goes, where are you going? I turn around, and I'm like, I thought, do I owe this guy money or something? <laughs> and I didn't even recognize him. He's got his hat all down here. I thought he was in, you know, disguise or something. I'm used to seeing him with Roger. So next thing you know, we started talking, and you know his son's with the 24 team and everything else. So uh, it was nice, nice to see Jack. You yeah, know? Yeah. But if you'd have been there, he'd have been chasing you around. <laughs> something about y'all's two personalities, you know, I, I don't know, yeah, man. We, we, we love it. But you know, they put you on the far end the other I day. Know. I think they I did that for Pyramidas. Probably. So would. put the girl in the middle and put y'all two to fight on the end. Mm -hmm. So speaking of fights, Marcus Ambrose. Uh, we, you skipped away from it again. <laughs> and Casey Mears. Casey I'm, Mears started to decide he wanted to throw him around and push him around a little bit. Marcus said, I don't want none of that. And <laughs> well, didn't I, lose I, that I right. I like the comment that when they talked to Casey. And Casey just owned it, which I, I thought was great. He handled it. Yeah. It was he, about he, as good as anybody without being mad or, or, you know, it is what it is. He got a good lick in on him. And, and yeah, Casey he, said that. He says, but he did, you know, this was before the penalties come out. He would like to know where the line is because you know he said I wanted to hit him but I just shoved him first right. and then and then he landed one on him so yeah Marcus got the twenty five thousand dollar fine and Casey only got fifteen thousand yeah I don't Still know why that well really Casey was. didn't hit yeah yeah but I guess he put his hands on him or okay. or, or was it to make up well, for so much so nobody knows who hit him hit. Uh, Marcus after that. One of the crew members One of the crew members got him, but I still haven't heard about who it was. I don't you think they totally know. My day was done at 2.30. I saw Roger. I was ready to get out of there. I wasn't, you know, on schedule to work the cup race. I actually went on the other side of the fence. He went and tailgating. Tailgating has got a whole new meaning. <laughs> oh. In 10 years that I've been, you know, away from uh, going to the races. Now, how'd you like watching it from the stands? I didn't like it. Uh, <laughs> I was going to say, all these years I've been in, the, been in the garage, I can't go sit in the stands well, again. You know, I get hot passes and I try to, you know, get my family down there and everything, you know, when I get the opportunity and they don't ever want to go back up, so they start fighting over, you know, <laughs> if I can get them passes uh, or not. So, it was interesting because I was with a group um, that, uh, you know, was with the Blue Ox people that sponsored the k and race. And we had we weren't like everybody else. We had the golf cart that got us down there. We didn't have to fight everybody. But I like to be able to, you know, get, get wherever I'm going and not be all packed in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, of course, it's just so different being over on that side. And then, but you do see a lot more of the race because a lot of times people say, I'll get a phone call after the race and they're like, did you see this? And mm -hmm. I'm like... No, all I saw was coming down pit road. Right. Oh, brain, I didn't get hit. So uh, it was really, really different. Um, I'm glad I did it. It, it. it was awesome. I did it one time this year, and I'm ready to go back in the pits. <laughs> so I'm ready to know what's going on, when it's going on, yeah, because yeah. I did not even know Casey Mears stuff was going on until 1 o'clock in the morning when somebody finally turned on the TV at the uh, RV and... There it was. And I was like, oh, we missed that. Mm -hmm. I would have I would've, I would've seen that if I was down in the pits. So, uh, but it was... Not necessarily. Was I mean, even even when we'd be another, I didn't even... You didn't even know what was going on? A Jack turned around. He was looking one way and I was looking the other way. And he was saying, oh, I wish they showed that again. I said, show what? You know what they would say? He would have been a good official. You know? <laughs> so, that's what I always get said. I, I didn't see something and I can't see everything. And usually right. all I'm worried about is safety. Yeah. You know, that's my job. And then they'll say, would you see that? No, man, I didn't see it. And they're like, well, don't you watch the race? And I'm like, no, I'm worried about who's going here, who's going there, and everything else. But uh, that was a really good experience to be able to go out there and sit. And it was it was pretty packed. It was uh, a packed uh, track. So yeah, it looked like it was a good... A it good, was pretty good. That, that was, was really good. They thought it was going to be a record that. for... You know, since yeah, since the whole you know markets kind of crashed, yeah, but it's, you know things tend to be coming back. But I guess they but they took some of the stands they, out of the back though and put RV spots back there too. No, I didn't notice that. that somebody else thing. was telling me about it. Yeah, they're still they're still the same size. Yeah, stands but especially it took down some stands because Dennis had told us on I, the back stretch. Well, I think they're talking about it and they're working on it. I'm not really well, they're sure. They're supposed to be putting a. Uh, it's like a fan zone. Yeah. That's what he was talking about because when well, I went back there, the back stretch the thing, for people that are walking around, they can stop and... Going down the back stretch, going into three, there was a, uh, mm -hmm. 
Oh uh, shoot, uh, steakhouse. Um, oh yeah, barbecue. Outback. Yeah, Outback. They That's had right. a whole Outback. large area over there, but it was still within the regular stands. Yeah, when you came out of the tunnel, you come up, that's where we usually park, and I had friends back there that uh, were on the turn two mm -hmm. area. I didn't notice all that, so it could be something that I didn't recognize, but uh, I, I thought the stands were just packed, and you know, you don't really get that feeling until you're right up in there, but uh, if they don't believe it wasn't packed, they should have tried getting out of all that traffic, so I mean... I, I waited about good. an hour and left, and Jack left way before I did. Mm. And when I went out, I hit quick traffic, and I was home. I will say Richmond is really good about getting traffic out of there. Well, you know, there's so many ways to come out of Richmond. I mean, they, they've done a great job, and this goes back to the Sawyer age who, mm -hmm. who developed the place. Uh, now owns Virginia Motor Speedway. They uh, there's so many ways to come out, and the cops are really good. Yeah, yeah. I mean, even when we're trying to get out and go to the airports and stuff, they they get you out of there. They get you down the road. Um, the one year that I didn't like it, uh, I was dating somebody. They were back there in uh, a campsite, and they had every road closed off. I was like, I don't believe this. I could have walked from here to there, but I drove all the way around the track. But th that's the way you've got to be. I mean. There's a traffic flow. There's a traffic pattern, and if they get them in, they get them out. So now, how, no, there, no, there's no, something else that Richmond has started doing this year too, and and it's and it's really nice. They actually have extra like trolley buses for the fans. Oh really? Yeah, I saw quite a few of that. And, yeah, and, I, and I actually utilized it because uh, they also well, they tightened up the security. If you have a hot pass, you can't just simply walk out the front gates. And come back in because you have to have a ticket. They have to scan the ticket, stamp you, and then when you come back in, you they don't like to. Well, you're only supposed to come in. No, you're only I, supposed to come in through the tunnel. That's right. You can only well, there, there, the there is one other spot right there by on the well. It's like by the tunnel. Well, by the tunnel going into the pits coming. Yeah, down there. yeah. Are you talking about There's, the walk-in area? Yeah. Well, yeah. I, I everybody I talked to, and I even talked to the guy that was in charge of all the gates. Uh -huh. They said, "No, nah, that's what it is." If you don't have a ticket, you can't come back in. You have to go all the way back around and go back in under turn three. Yeah, you well, can't even you can't yeah. even go into that quick access point. I tell yeah, you the truth, <laughs> working with them. Uh, and, yeah, yeah, try it. Well, the guy <laughs> told me he's like, we're not supposed to let you in. Sorry. Right. <laughs> no, I'm, I, no, I'm saying this year mm -hmm. they they beefed it up. Right. And, but the thing was, I went out, took the regular ride out to you know back out to the in Rico section, and there was a trolley. You hopped on a trolley and rode all the way around in. Uh, Dropped you off over right there in the middle of all the uh, souvenir trailers and everything. I tell you what, Where I got my water X glasses. <laughs> <laughs> He's gonna keep throwing that in there, isn't he? Actually, so, actually, it wasn't three glasses. Uh huh. It was the one that you've got the three different lenses for. Oh, uh, okay. Now he's he's you know backpedaling on that. Yeah. But there is another Richmond race coming up that I know he'll be at. So we'll see if he talks to that rep. So, <laughs> well, we've had him on the show. Yeah, we've had, had him on the show. Okay. We can call him. I can call him right up any time. He's actually replacing some lenses for me and he's going to be shooting them back to me. Cool deal. Mm -hmm. But to get back to the Richmond thing before we go, you know, they were really well organized this year. Um, not saying they weren't in the past, but, you know, for our autograph session, we had the K&N East guys go out there to the, uh, uh, the amphitheater area. Mm -hmm. And they made sure that our drivers got there and it was raining and it was just a logistical nightmare. But they got everybody there, everybody back, and everything went really smooth. So you really can't ask for, you know, a whole lot. Um, getting us in and out, they did everything they possibly could because, you know, NASCAR, like I said, it had to be. I don't know because I'm not in the management role of it, but it had to be a logistical nightmare with, sure. you know, canceling the race on a Friday night, trying to get in on a Saturday, trying to get the haulers in, trying to get the haulers out for nation uh, nationwide. And, uh, and, of course, the K&N car sat there all night all long night. through the rain and everything. Exactly. Yeah, I want to give a shout out to Brendan Newberry and Greg Galding, a couple of the guys we usually have on the show. And yes. They didn't fare so well this past weekend. Well, you know, they gave everything they got. They got a long season ahead of them, oh, yeah. um, and they got a lot of talent behind them. They got great teams. Uh, I think we're going to keep hearing those names in 2014 yeah. and beyond. Because each one of them was leading the East and the West points in the. Uh, oh. uh, Manufacturers or something like that, or the no the owners points. Owners points. Yeah, they were both leading at one point. Uh, I think before coming into Richmond. I got you. So we'll give them a big shout out, and uh, hopefully 2014 we'll hear more from them guys.
All right, everybody happy with everything? Well, so this is probably cool. the last time we'll be here together and, you know, not have Jack, <laughs> so... Uh, <laughs> the last time it'll be a duet instead of a trio? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, uh, all right well we'll catch everybody next week on let's talk racing see thank you next week hey guys i'm daytona 500 winner trevor bain and thank you for watching let's talk racing hi i'm robert richardson jr driver of the number 23 dodge challenger for r3 motorsports in the nascar nationwide series and you're watching let's talk racing I'm Timothy Peter, driver of the number 17 Toyota in the NASCAR Camp World Truck Series, and you're listening to Let's Talk Racing. Here's your 2011 champion, David Pollens. Hi, this is David Pollens, driver of the 33 NASCAR Late Model, 2011 Old Dominion Speedway Track Champion. Thank you for watching Let's Talk Racing TV. I'm Sam Hunt, driving a 42 car, on a thing, let's talk racing. Hi, my name is Natalie Sather, I drive the 94 k and Lady Eagle Safety Wear, Butler Built Seats, Bell Helmets, Hooker Harness Seat Belts, number 94 at South Boston Speedway. Be sure to listen to Let's Talk Racing TV.